Good evening folks and welcome to our Sunday night meeting here in Maldon Free Presbyterian Church. We trust that you'll be able to stay with us uh, for the next half hour as we minister God's word and preach the gospel. In a little moment we'll be turning to Luke's gospel in the chapter 23 uh, to look at the verses 33 to 38. But before we do so, let us seek the Lord together please in a word of prayer to seek his help and his blessing. Let's unite our hearts in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we bow before thee again this evening, the evening of thy day. And Lord, we're so thankful when we read thy word that it was in the cool of the evening when you came and you met with your people on so many occasions. And our Father, even as we meet together by this means during this COVID-19 lockdown, Lord, we pray as we gather in our homes or around the mobile or the laptop or whatever means we're watching on, Lord, we pray that thou wilt give us a real sense of thy presence. And Lord, that thou wilt meet with us. Lord, we confess we need thee. Lord, this lockdown, it's difficult and many, many people. Lord, we need a word from thee, a word of encouragement. And Lord, we pray that even tonight, Lord, that you would come. And as we preach the gospel, Lord, that thou wilt make men and women, Lord, to see their need and to hear the call of God. And Father, we pray that even in this time of darkness, Lord, that they will come to the light of the gospel. Lord, we look back in a week that has gone by, and Lord, we're so thankful that thou hast kept us and preserved us and are going out and are coming in. And, O oh God, we thank thee that thou hast kept thy hand upon us, Lord, that we're well this evening. Do you remember those that are sick and have been laid down at this time because of the COVID-19, and, Lord, because of other illnesses and difficulties? Remember again those that mourn and those that grieve. Our Father, we pray that thou who dost comfort the broken heart and bind up such as be of that contrite spirit. Lord, we pray that thou will come and draw near unto them this evening. Lord, for those that are struggling even at this time, Lord, struggling with uh, the stress of everything, Lord, the fear of the, the pandemic, Lord, and the virus, Lord, shut in, not able to go out, Lord, we pray, our God, that for those that are struggling with it mentally, Lord, for those that have maybe slipped back into the uh, the pot of depression, as it were, the well of depression, Lord, we pray that thou will come and lift them up tonight. And our Father, we pray that thou will give them a sight of thee, Lord, that they might hear thy voice. And our Father, even as they hear thee saying, come unto me, Lord, we pray that thou will come. And Lord, that thou will speak to their hearts and they will come. And Lord, that they will open up their arms and receive thee as their saviour. And in thee find peace and rest, not only for this time, but for eternity. Remember again, Lord, those that are fighting this battle in the hospitals and in the community. Lord, for those that are keeping us, uh, Lord, safe and well. Lord, for those that are filling the shelves and enabling the tables to be furnished. Lord, we pray that thou will bless them. But Lord, even now, as we gather around thy word, wherever that may be, Father, we pray that you will come and Give help, Lord, in the understanding. But, Lord, give this preacher help in the preaching of thy word. And to thee will be careful to give to all the praise and all of the glory. For we ask it in the Saviour's name. Amen. We're turning to Luke's Gospel, chapter 23. It's the crucifixion of Christ. And we're reading from the verses 33 through to the end of verse 38. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his garments and cast lot. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he be Christ, the Son of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. We'll end our reading there, and we trust that God himself well, bless the reading of his word to our hearts this evening. Here in Luke chapter 23, it was 
the time of the Passover in Jerusalem, and all the world seemed to be gathered into the city. The Romans were there as the domineering and governing force at that particular time, and the Jews from every part of Palestine, and even from the furthest parts of the diaspora, uh, where the Jews had fled to after the conquest of Palestine by the Romans, they were all back in Palestine to celebrate the Passover. But not only was the, the, were they in Jerusalem, but they were there at the cross as well, uh, at the time of the Saviour's death. Indeed, the titles that were nailed to the cross of Christ were written in three languages, in Greek and Latin and Hebrew, which were the three main languages of the world, that world at that particular time. All the world was represented at the cross. And Pilate wanted all the world uh, to be able to read what he had written. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Pilate wanted all the world to see what he had done. And he wanted all the world to mock and to scorn the Jewish people for what they had done, and especially uh, the Saviour. But there was something telling about the three languages which Pilate wrote in that day. You see, Greek was the language of reason. The Greeks prided themselves in their philosophy and their thinking, and they prided themselves in their reasoning. The Greeks were the thinkers of the world at that time. They possessed uh, the schools and the universities of learning. The Greeks were the thinkers. But then Latin was the language of the law or the rule. It was the language of the Romans. I remember in secondary school we had to study Latin. And there was a little joke. Latin is a dead language, as dead as it can be. Once it killed the Romans, and now it's killing me. Uh, but the Latin was the language of the Romans, and the Romans weren't interested in God, nor the Saviour. Weren't interested in, in either. All the Romans wanted to do was to conquer the world, and to rule the world. The Romans were only interested in the material things, not the spiritual. But the Hebrew uh, was, it was written in Hebrew. That was the language of religion. The Old Testament was written mainly in Hebrew. There was a little bit written in Aramaic, but the most of it was written in the Hebrew language. And so Hebrew was the language uh, that was chiefly used in the religious services. And so when we look at the titles of Christ that were nailed to his cross, not only was there the Romans and the Jews, there was the learned people. They were there, the Greeks. There was the powerful, that's the Romans, they were there. There was the religious, they were there, that's the, the Jews. All of them were there to witness the death of the Saviour. They were there to see the miracles of the cross. That namely, the, the Son of God dying in the place of sinful men, that men like you and I might be saved. But sadly that day, for all the people witnessed, we only read of one man apart from the dying thief. We only read of one man who actually stood at the cross and was saved that day, namely the Roman centurion who said, truly this man was the Son of God. You know, what a shame. The world stood at the cross. The world witnessed the death of the Son of God, the death of the Saviour for sinful men, but only two men that we read of in the Scriptures were saved at the cross. What a shame. But I wonder, how many times in your life have you stood at the cross? How many times have you sat in a service and you've heard the preaching of Christ out of Calvary and you've watched the Saviour die for you and for your sin? Perhaps hundreds of times you have stood at the cross and you have rejected the one who died for you and shed his blood that you might be redeemed, that you might be saved. You have rejected him. You have denied him service after service, mission after mission. You have rejected Christ. Remember what the scripture says in Matthew 10 verse 33. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. You be careful about rejecting Christ. For one day he will reject you. But this evening I want us to consider from Luke's Gospel those who were at the cross. 
Now, firstly, as we've said, the Romans were there. These soldiers who so cruelly treated our Saviour, they were Roman, Roman soldiers. They were the ones who arrested him in the Garden of Gethsemane. They were the ones who battered him and mocked him in, the, in Pilate's Hall. They were the ones that scourged him. They were the ones that led that Roman gibbet upon his back, led the cross upon his back, led him out to Calvary. The soldiers were the one who took the hammer and the nails and nailed the Saviour to the cross and then raised that cross up and dropped it down until it socket, leaving the Saviour hanging there between heaven and earth. And having done all that, they sat down to watch him die, and as they did, they cast lots, they threw dice for his garments. The Romans were there at the cross, taunting and mocking Christ. In verse 36 we read, And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar. But at the cross the Romans pictured uh, the rest uh, uh, and the lost pagan Gentile world. The Romans, the Roman Empire was full of uh, idolatry, full of paganism. They didn't believe in the God of heaven. They lived as if there was no God at all. There was no fear of God among them or in them. And as such, they represent the untold millions who are still untold. The untold millions who have never heard of Christ and are still living in heathen paganism and in sin. Without Christ, without hope in this world and without hope for eternity. But I wonder tonight, living in the midst of our, our wee land that has been steeped with the gospel, are you is that you tonight? You may as well be a pagan by the lifestyle that you live. You live as if there was no God in heaven to whom you will answer. No God in heaven to whom you will give an account and before whom you will be judged. You live as you please, you do as you like. But the truth be told, after all the pleasures of sin have vanished and the will in a short time, you're without hope, you're without peace in this world, and far worse you are without hope in eternity. For when all the facade and all the rest is taken away, life is very shallow for you, isn't it? Whenever everything is taken away, life is so meaningless, it's so shallow, it's so miserable. Oh, it doesn't have to be. Be done with your sinful living, that what does it amount to? Be done with your sinful living and your paganism, as it were, and come to Christ and be saved. Let me say the Romans were there with their military might. They were there with all of their pomp and all of their power. They had their engineering, their technology, uh, their, their science. But for all of that, they rejected Christ. Can I tell you, you may have everything in this life. You may have greatness, you may have wealth, but if you haven't Christ as your saviour, spiritually you're lost and you're bound for hell. Do you need to be saved? The Romans were there. But secondly, we see that the robbers were there. In Luke 23, verse 33, we read, And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors of the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Matthew 27 verse 38 tells us that they were thieves, that they were robbers. It says, Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and the other on the left. These two men represented the criminal class, those who defied the law of the land. They were, there, they were men who were guilty of open sins. As we've seen before, they were brigands. They were troublemakers. They were rabble raisers. They were murderers and the like. But these men had been found out and, and here they were. They were, they were caught red-handed and now they're sentenced and they're condemned. They're, they were paying the price for their sin. But still their hearts were as hard even in death. Now both of them hurled insults at Christ at the beginning. Thankfully one of them eventually realized his sin and his need and also realized who Christ was, the Son of God, and rebuking his fellow in crime, he turned to Christ for mercy and for pardon. 
and for forgiveness and thankfully he received it and he was saved. But these two thieves represent those who have broken God's law. They represent those who are still in their sin and who are still rejecting Christ and rejecting the word of God to live as they like. They were criminals. But tell me, is there anything more criminal than rejecting Christ and turning the Saviour away? Indeed, to reject Christ for the final time is to commit what we call the unpardonable sin. Every other sin can be forgiven. But the sin of rejecting Christ for the final time can never be forgiven. And remember, he says, my spirit shall not always strive with man. You be careful that you don't commit that unforgivable sin and reject Christ. You could live for another 20 years. And if Christ never speaks to you, you'll never be saved. Oh, if he's speaking to you tonight, if you feel the conviction of sin, and there's that fear of meeting God, whether you're a backslider or unseen, I said to you tonight, you get right with God. There's nothing more criminal than turning Christ away. Here's these two men. They were condemned, but unsaved. And so are you. If you're, con- if you're unsaved, you're condemned. The Bible says in John 3, verse 18, He that believeth on him or trusteth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth or trusteth not is condemned already. Because he hath not trusted or believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. They were condemned to death. But listen, friends, so are you. Every one of us must die. It's appointed unto men once to die, but after that the judgment. And the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. You're condemned. And without Christ there's no hope. But with Christ, thank God, there is hope. And there's still hope for you tonight if you'd only repent of your sin and call upon the Lord to save you. Both these men were criminals. Both of them were condemned. Thankfully, one of them was converted. The dying thief was saved in death from eternal death and hell. He was saved not through religious men and certainly not by good works. He was saved when he looked to Christ. And repenting of his sin, called upon the Lord to save him. Can I tell you, that's the only way that whereby you can be saved. There is no other way. You've got to turn away from your sin and turn away from everything else, whatever that might be, religion or good works. And you've got to look by faith to Christ and call upon him to save you. The Romans were there. Oh, the robbers, they were there. But then we see that the rabble was there. I I suppose that the rabble or the crowd around the cross represents the the greatest majority of people today. They were the thoughtless crowd. They were the fickle crowd. They were the ungrateful crowd. You see, for three and a half years, many of this crowd around the cross had run after the Lord for what they could get and for all that they could get. And the Saviour had done so much for them. Remember, as we go through the the Gospels, he healed their sick, he raised their dead, he gave sight to their blind, he made their deaf to hear. He had fed them, fed the multitudes. He had cast out their demons. And the list could go on and on and on of what Christ had done for them. They wanted the Saviour only for what the Saviour could do for them and give them. But they didn't want the Saviour himself. They didn't want his teaching. They didn't want his doctrine. They didn't want his lifestyle. They loved their sin too much. They clung on to their religiosity. For it pleased the flesh and it wasn't too hard. And here they were at the cross. And it was really them. It was really the I know that it was the soldiers who hammered the spikes into his fingers, but it was the rabble, it was the crowd at the cross that sent him to Calvary. In reality, it was they that nailed him to the cross of shame and agony with, with their cries. You see, it was this same crowd that cried out for Barabbas the murderer instead of Christ. And it was them who cried away with him, away with him, crucify him, crucify him. And as I said, they represent the majority of people today in the world. 
of the one Christ for the benefits. They call upon Christ when, when things get tough and they're in trouble. They turn to the Lord and they take all that they get from Christ and through Christ. But they don't really want Christ. They want their sin and they want their religion. And when they get all that they want from Christ, it's good by God. Till I need thee again. If that's the way that you have turned out to be. Maybe not saved at all. Maybe you're backslidden. Maybe you're not saved. But you have no time really for God only whenever you're in trouble. And you have no real love for God in your heart. Let me say to you, be careful. For the Lord could leave you in your sinful ways and he could leave you in your condemnation. And when you stand before him at the judgment seat of Christ, the Lord will say to you, depart from me. If you say to the Lord, after you get all that you want in your time of trouble, if you say goodbye, God, depart from me. Well, then at the judgment seat of Christ, he'll say, depart from me into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels. I never knew you. And listen, friend, if you have no time or no room for Christ, then on the last day he will have no time and no room for you and glory. You be warned, even now, as we said before, we'll say again, he says, my spirit shall not always strive with man. Maybe it could be after this COVID-19 pandemic is sorted out. After the Lord has spoken to you for these number of weeks and we get back to some form of reality, maybe the Lord will say, I've tried enough. And he could leave you. He could leave you to your sin. And you could be lost forever. If God is speaking to you in this pandemic, though you would do well to get right with God. The Romans were there. The robbers were there. The rabble was there. But then finally notice the rabbis were there. Did you ever notice that none of the rabble or the rabbis are mentioned as being saved at the cross? The Roman centurion was saved, the robber was saved. But none of the rabble, none of the rabbis were saved at the cross that we read of. But here they were at Calvary. They had half of the Bible memorized. They ignored the other half, by the way, because it didn't suit their doctrine and it didn't suit their lifestyle. Indeed, they had tinkered with the scriptures so much that it was basically buried beneath their man-made mountain. But man made laws. You know, their laws were more stringent than the Bible. And they thought that their man made laws were more uh, important than the scriptures. They had buried the Bible underneath their doctrine. But the rabbis were there basically for one reason, and that was to make sure that the Savior was dead. And then they would go home and religiosity. Uh, religiously keep the Sabbath day and the Passover. They put their church and their religion before Christ and before their soul. Not one of them that we read of was saved at the cross. I believe some were saved on the day of Pentecost. But at the cross, we don't read that one of them was saved. Oh, there's so many good, decent people, religious people, upright people. Many, many decent people doing the same thing today as the rabbis done. Their works, their good works could put many as a Christian to shame. They're, they're faithful and loyal to their church more so than some of those that profess Christ. And, and they think that all their good works will suffice for them. And that's what they're depending upon for heaven. They're building their hope for eternity. They're hoping for heaven on shifting sands. And one day they're going to be lost. And the sad thing is that their, their bishops, their canons, their priests, their ministers, their pastors it is telling them that their way is the right way. Uh, but it's the way. It's the way to hell. You know, I wonder, is that you? Let me put the scriptures for you. And these are the words of Christ. We preached on them last Sunday evening. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He says you must be born again. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. The Bible tells us that all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Oh, listen, it's not through our righteousnesses. It's not through our church. It's not through ceremony. It's through Christ. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But the book of Acts says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Unsaved friend, please don't depend upon your good works or your religion or your rabbis or clergymen, but just put your faith in Christ. Put your faith in the Saviour. Depend upon him. Cast your all upon the Lord. And call upon this evening to save you. While in mercy he is calling, do not pass him by. Tonight we've stood at the cross, and I will say to you, step out from the crowd. Maybe the crowd that you've got into is holding you back. Step out from the crowd. If they want to go on down the broad road to hell, don't go with them. Step out from the crowd and come to the foot of the cross by faith and kneel there and get under the blood and ask the Lord to forgive you, to cleanse you and to wash you in the blood and be saved for time and for eternity. Saved in peace with God. It's a gift that you can have this evening. If I can be of any help at any time, you can contact me through Facebook or some other way, just get in touch. But you don't need me. You need Christ. And he's right there beside you. Just repent of your sin and ask him. It doesn't matter what way it comes out, so long as it comes from the heart. Ask him this evening to forgive your sin, to save your soul, to give you that peace and assurance of salvation, of heaven and of home. God bless you. Thank you again for listening. Tune in every weeknight at 7 o'clock onto Facebook. You can look up Mulvin Free Presbyterian Church, look up the page, or look out for my page, Jeffrey Abraham, and you'll find the little messages there. And we trust that there'll be a blessing to your soul. And please share the wee messages, that the message of the gospel will get out to so many. But tonight, we're reaching out to you the Saviour's reaching out to you. Take his nail pierced hand. Call upon him to save you, friend. Come to Christ. Let's just unite our hearts in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank thee for thy word again this evening. Lord, we've stood around the cross. And Lord, we've looked around. And, O oh God, we see that the world was there. And, O oh God, we have stood at the cross this evening by faith. And, Lord, we pray that thou will give grace. Lord, to lost and needy sinners this evening to come and to put their faith and their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Bless thy word by thy spirit of plant to many hearts. May precious souls be saved and backsliders restored. And God's people encouraged. Be with each one now and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of his Holy Spirit rest, remain and abide upon us and all that we love. For we ask it in the Saviour's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you folks and keep watching and we'll be here God willing again next Lord's Day and each evening. God bless you. Thank you for your time and we'll speak to you again soon.